Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I enjoy stargazing by looking in a mirror. Yes, I'm that shallow. <laughs> oh, wow. So you're a superstar then. In my own mind, yes. I'm sure you have a lot of supporters. Oh, it's cool, it's cool. But anywho, in today's history review, we are going to do My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, issue 60. In this issue, the Cutie Mark Crusader helps a filly who doesn't want to follow in her family's footsteps. So how will it turn out? Well, you have to wait and see. But before we get into it, we are going to do first impressions. And Silver, what do you think, my friend? Well, this is an interesting ep- uh, issue, rather. The Kingdom Crusaders don't get a lot of comic book screen time. I think the last time they were really featured was the Ponies of Dark Water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. Where basically it was run a- one, run to your family who's been corrupted, run away from your family that's been corrupted. <laughs> er, the sadness. Oh, but King Arthur said it best. Run away! Run away! Wait, get the holy hand grenade of Antioch! <laughs> Oh, uh, but talking about Holy Hand Grenade, did you watch Ready Player One? Not yet, ah, no. All right. Sorry, it's been a very, very active time. It's cool, it's cool. But I enjoyed the character of Gilded Lily. Her design is a little curious, and we'll we'll get into that. But she seemed like a likable character, and her struggle reflects something that's going on within the Crusaders. And I think it's a good mix when you can have both an external conflict and an internal conflict happening at once, and one may tie into the other. It's also a very short comic in my eyes. I mean, they they establish the problem very quickly. They address it very quickly. And there's not a lot of dilly-dally in between. My only concern is how easy it is for foals to suddenly get their cutie marks. And we'll likely talk about that uh, when we get into the review proper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As for me, I highly enjoy this comic because when I read this comic, I felt joy. It's one of those feelings where, you know, when your heart wells up and then you uh, have tears of joy like i had this with uh, i had that with this one and yeah uh, gilded lily here was kind of a cool character and the crusaders with their internal conflict that you don't really notice until it's pointed out was pretty cool like we'll talk about the conflict which wasn't really much of a conflict to begin with and we get to it and other than that I enjoyed it. And you mentioned that this comic was short, Silver. Um, Honestly, I didn't felt that way. Not like last week's comic. Like last week's comic was really, really fast. Yeah, we played through that pretty quickly. Yeah, like I reviewed it and like, wait, what, what? That was fast? Like, wow, okay. That was 20 minutes. I know. What am I going to do with the rest of my day? <laughs> Asleep. <laughs> But anywho, uh, let's get into it. So if you have not read this comic yet, uh, we recommend that you go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the comic. Now, let's get right into it. So we start off the day with the Crusaders getting ready for Crusader Camp. And before I hit in any further, this is a quote-unquote follow-up to the episode. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. Now that we've got Marks and Recreation and Rumble has seen the light... Now they can do they can do even more camps without adult supervision. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where's Gloriosa? We 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 need her to say you got this. It's okay, Crusaders. I've got this. Uh, boys. But anywho, uh, Crusaders <laughs> are getting ready. Uh, they have supplies for um their overnight camp out, so that's cool. Um, and also the town folks were. Kind enough to borrow their goods and wares for the Crusaders. So that's cool. That's cool. Except for poor Scootaloo. Oh, yeah. She's got bungee cords, which I got to worry about Ponyville that they just gave a bunch of bungee cords to little fillies. <laughs> I don't care if they've got their cutie marks. They're still not of an age where they can just bungee mark, bungee jump unsupervised. But Silver, first, a joke. What do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? I don't know, Norman. What do you get when you cross an owl with a bungee cord? My ass! <laughs> Enough! I wanted to tell a joke. I was laughing to myself with that one. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I don't know. Just bungee cord kicks. Just bungee cords. It tickles my funny bone because of Kung Pao. 
Ah, bungee cords. See, all I gotta do to get you to go into the giggles is just make that make that funny sound. Oh, yes, I'm her father. <laughs> wee wee wee. <laughs> I can see where I can see the similarities. Ah, <laughs> uh, but anywho, talking about similarities, uh, Rarity comes in and she has a, an emergency, and the emergency is that Fancy Pants is coming down to Ponyville to enroll her niece into the camp. And that's good, right? Well, it's good for all. I mean, the Crusaders get a little bit more publicity in Canterlot, mm-hmm. and that means that they can get fillies from far and wide to come to their camp. But it also means that they are pawns in Rarity's power play. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is, like, uh, Rarity says that, uh, what you would call this, uh, what's the line? Uh, do you know what this means? Um, well, an extra camper for the camp out. Uh, what no well technically yes blah 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 so technically she wants to kind of schmooze with fancy pants yeah so yeah i ship it yep well, well rarity ships with almost anything yes it, except spike <laughs> don't get even get me started i i am following a group on film fiction that is parity that ship works man that ship works <sighs> someone should tell that to spike he needs a little bit of optimism true that true that Ah, but anywho, um, with the news, the Crusaders are kind of happy with the whole prospect of getting more campers. So, yay, that's going to be awesome. So they con- But they're still leaving behind the bungee cords. <laughs> and Scootaloo has epic pouty face. Yep, yep. Well, but still. She's like, uh, we're- I will destroy you too in your sleep. That's what her face is saying. <laughs> uh, but still. Uh, we go on to the next page and we see that the main six are there to greet Fancy Pants. Why all of them need to be there? Like, this is kind of the quota of Twilight needs to be in one episode per series. It's like, okay, princess, you've had your appearance. Here's your check. Move on. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, um, Fancy Pants and his niece, Gilded Lily, comes in and, well, they start off the story by saying that um, Gilded Lily needs to be here because Chancy Pants wants her to get a cutie mark and whatnot. I'm just summarizing here. It'd probably be wrong, but still. Uh, and because he wants her to represent the family and so on. Does anyone else find it just a little weird that you say, Hello, I'm here. I'm bringing my niece here so you can usher her into mayorhood. <laughs> it's like, what? whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that, that sounds... Um, freaky but at the same time too um i had a what you call this complaint because yes. there's no mention of gilded lily beforehand like how does sweetie bell know that that's gilded lily well i i think it's easy to assume that rarity mentioned lily's name off panel and... if saying gilded lily that her his niece's name is gilded lily okay there we go yeah, okay i mean i i can dig it but still it bothered me for a bit. Well, what can bother everyone is when Fancy Pants says, well, she should get a cutie mark in being important and influential. What does that even mean? <laughs> Just imagine if Donald Trump was your cutie oh mark. Oh, God, no. I love my face on your rump. It's fantastic. <laughs> I give it a 10. God, no. I'm the greatest cutie mark ever. Ah, uh, God, no, God, no. But anyway, um, Rarity brings Fancy Pants to the place where he'll, uh, he and his niece will be staying. And camp starts. So camp starts by setting up camp and going for a nature walk while picking apples and whatnot. That's how it starts, I guess. And there's no bungee cords. Or scooters. Yeah. No scooter tricks. Yep. And here's the, what you call this internal conflict between the Crusaders. Scooter not being allowed to do what she wants to do. And the thing is, uh, they voted on it. 2v1. And she got voted out. So, yeah, that's the internal... The tyranny of the majority. Mm-hmm. That's the internal conflict that they're having right now. But in all honesty, the dangerous stuff they, they did before was kind of dangerous. Yeah, it is a, it is a wonder that these uh, fillies managed to make it this far. Natural selection is a lie. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, uh, they go off by picking apples, taking a swim, and bird watching. And with that, we get a filly who got her cutie mark. 
uh, in bird watching. So that's cool. Well, now you say it's in bird watching, but I noticed that they're staring at us. So in my own twisted mind, I think they're spying on their neighbors in Ponyville. No, man. If and... you take a look, see carefully, she's off to the side looking at the cross button at the top there. It's always watching. <laughs> oh, so anywho, um, as time goes on, the day is late and they notice that Gilded Lily is kind of moping around and not having fun. And the CMCs are wondering if that, is she not enjoying her time here or what? Like, if that's the case, we need to change up the plan. But for now, we have to stick to the plan because, well, we'll talk to her later on. So they go back to camp and one of the campers volunteers herself to make dinner for them. And dinner is just apple slices, so it's no problem, you know, um, apple slices, pan fry. I got no idea what she did, but it seems like she's having a lot of fun. And suddenly, boom, cutie mark. Huzzah. Two cutie marks in a day. Now, think about that for a minute. The Crusaders went, like, what, five whole seasons hunting for their marks? Mm -hmm. And, you know, going on this great personal journey, and it's meant to happen when it happens. And now they've, in essence, through trial and error, forced a cutie mark to appear on two of their uh, attendees. Maybe forced is too strong a word, but it's almost too easy now. Hmm, how do I put this? It yeah, it does sound that way. But in my mind, how you get a cutie mark is doing things that you enjoy and you feel right. Like you feel that hey, th what I'm doing here is what I'm meant to do. And in this uh, Phyllis case, uh, she mentioned that my parents run a lunch stand where I sometimes help. But this pro this mark proves that cooking alongside them is where I belong. They're going to be so proud. This little filly here enjoys doing the cooking and yeah, it runs in the family and whatnot. And remember, your cutie mark determines your future. This is the struggle that Trender Hooves and, uh, no, not Trender Hooves, Troubleshoes and uh, Rumble struggled with. Rumble, not so and, much. Yeah. Well, he was afraid that it would lock him off from the future. Yeah, and that episode taught us that even though that you're meant to, well, in let's just say Rainbow Dash, for example, um, your cutie mark destines you to fly really, really fast, but you still can do other things. For example, rarity. Rarity is a good example. Still, the topic of destiny has always been, it's been a, a sore spot for me. It's like, if your life is on rails and you basically surrender who you are to it, in some ways, a lot of fiction, uh, including mythologies, is about sacrificing the ego. You, you, do what's best for the world, not what's best for you. But at the same time, a cutie mark, it's telling you rather than letting you choose in my eyes, which is a very key distinction. True, but the way I'm looking at it here is that a cutie mark tells you that, hey, you're good at this, but you still can do other things. It's just that your hobby or your whatever it is that you do for like I said, Rarity is a good example of this because her talent is finding gems. But she loves to create dresses and that is her day job, creating dresses and whatnot. So you don't see her being a minor. Well, actually, we, we did see her Philly Hood, so technically we did see her as a minor. <laughs> oh, you. Uh, yes, me. <laughs> oh, goodness sakes. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Now, but we also know as a minor, she has a, a hard hat with a bow on it, which is just so rarity. Mm -hmm. So very rarity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but, 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 I, I think we're losing track. Or, or are we? We are, but <laughs> but I'm making you giggle, so I count as a win. <laughs> <Wee -oo. laughs> oh, boy. Okay, um, so after everyone was happy with the Philly getting her cutie mark, uh, the CMCs go to one side and discuss about Gilded Lily, because she is not having it like she's upset she's not happy and the cmcs are pondering like okay let's talk to her later and see where this goes like after stargazing so the cmc announced that hey after dinner uh, let's go set up the telescope and do some stargazing yay and we can totally see that gilded lady here is mm, scared she, she is so scared so next page we go see that the cmcs and crew are stargazing and 
they got no idea what they're doing. They, they, they got no idea. But they got really huge telescopes. I mean, good gravy. You could spy on the next country. <laughs> oh, hey, I think I see the Storm King's army coming. <laughs> Who? Uh, <clears throat> but still, um, sorry? They're the X. They look really boring. <laughs> Uh, but hey, uh, they 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 got it wrong. Like, is that or some minor or some major? Uh, is that the siren? Maybe it's a donkey and whatnot. And Gilded Lily blows her top and uh, and quickly tells the sorry and quickly tells everyone that Ursa Major is right here. Uh, it's way larger than Ursa Minor and so on. And by her talking and whatnot, or by her explaining or by her teaching everyone, she gets her cutie mark. It's a telescope with three stars. Ooh. And she lets her mane down. Yep. And yay, she got a cutie mark. The CMCs are happy. And she screams no and runs away. And with that, Scootaloo says, I'm going to go and find out what's happened. Scootaloo finds Gilded Lily crying beside the tree. And Scootaloo starts talking to her. Because Scootaloo is filled with determination. <laughs> 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 Uh, so anyway, um, she they they start talking and she explains that she loves the whole activity. Like she loves being outdoors, the walk among nature, studying it, um, and obviously astronomy. But she doesn't want to get those cutie mark because she wants to make uh, Uncle Smarty Pants proud of her and for the family and whatnot. But Having a telescope cutie mark with three stars, that doesn't seem regal, right? Like, look at Fancy Pants. He has three crowns. Fleur de Lis has, well, three Fleur de Lis cutie marks. And so on. And, yeah. But she's the trophy girlfriend, as far as I can tell. Uh, probably, I don't know. The way he ignores her. <laughs> uh, no no comment, man. I, I, th- that was early uh, MLP. <laughs> but still, um... With this, they, they keep talking and Gilded Lily here brings up something to Scootaloo saying that you're one to talk because the way that your friends are treating you, they seem to denounce what you want to do. And with that, Scootaloo realizes that, hey, you're right. I should do something about this. And yeah, so what do you think, man? I'm glad it's these two who have a talk. I mean... Lily's not accusing Scootaloo of being a hypocrite. She's just saying, hey, we're both having the same problem. Doing what others expect of us, letting someone else decide our lives. And even as Scootaloo tries to defend her viewpoint, she suddenly... It's funny, once you say something out loud, there's something about giving a voice to that thought, to giving it an almost tangible form that you can sort of look at it, inspect it, and realize what's going on. True, true. And so... I, I thought I think this is a, a good one. I think this is excuse just the right crusader for this job. Yeah, and with her love of extreme sports and the with her love of extreme sports, the other two don't really see eye to eye on that one. And yeah, it's a good differentiator between them. Like I think we had this episode once before. Season five was it? Or season six? Remember the one where Tender Taps? Well, that was, I believe that was season six. Yeah, because that's Blue, Bloom and Gloom. No, wait, that was where she was dreaming. What was the name of that episode where the Crusaders realized that they don't always have to do everything together? Yeah, I'm trying to look for it. But yes, the general idea is you can do whatever you want and you don't really need to share the same things. Basically, you don't need to do on your marks. Yes. Yes, yeah, on your marks. Basically, you don't really need to do the same thing all the time. So that's a good example there. But anywho, uh, let's carry on. The next day, Scootaloo confronts, or really not, confronts sounds strong, but Scootaloo goes up to Sweetie Belle and Apple Bloom and talks to them about she wants to start a sub-camp for extreme sports. And the other two think that she's quitting the CMCs to start her own group. And Scootaloo just says that, no, I'm not quitting the Crusaders. I'm just doing my own thing. Um, You guys are not interested in extreme sports, but I am. I'm just going to start 
a sub club or sub group where we can do extreme sports or people who are interested in extreme sports can you know do extreme sports and so on i i do love the idea of a key mark crusader civil war uh so who's going to be black panther <laughs> oh that's racist <laughs> ah. <clears throat> but anywho the other two understands and says they're sorry because they didn't really mean to make Scootaloo feel that way. And yeah, it's all good and on their end. And with that, it's time to fix another problem. And that is with Fancy Pants. So the CMC and Gilded Lily goes up to Fancy Pants and, well, Gilded Lily says that she's sorry for having a cutie mark that is not regal or not influential enough and surprise surprise fancy pants says it's okay and is he's not really surprised he noticed that gilded lily doesn't seem interested in the whole socializing thing and it doesn't make her any less a part of the family so that's all good in the end her worries and whatnot doesn't really matter because family is family and they all work together so yay well, I'm going to be just a little critical. I mean, one, I still think highly of Fancy Pants. He's, of all the, the ponies in Canterlot, he seems to be the one most open to others, the, the least haughty. Yet when he says, uh, when he says it's okay, how to, sometimes how you phrase a message is as important as the message itself. He's saying it's okay that your, your cue mark isn't influential or, or regal. And I'm just like, dude, this is who she is. I mean, I feel like he's phrasing it in just the wrong way, as if to say that even to imply there's been a mistake. There's nothing wrong here. Mm. There's nothing that shouldn't be celebrated. Yeah, and I, I, I see what you mean, but I think that the whole line that he says does put on more weight than what you're leading to, Silver, because um, I'm just going to read the whole line here. Oh, Lily. It's okay. I can say this is much of a surprise. You never did seem to like the socializing much, but it doesn't make you any less a part of the family. So the it's okay part there does sound a bit, you know, like what you mentioned, but the whole line, the bottom part, it doesn't make you any less part of the family. That holds more weight. Well, that that's the best part of Fancy Pants shining through. He's on kind of a roller coaster when it comes to highs and lows. True, true. But Silver, um, how would you word it then? Like, if you were to write that specific line there, how would you do it? I say, Lily, I'm not disappointed at all. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That, that makes. Yeah, that makes more. That that makes it much better. Much, much better. Well, it's, it's because she in the previous panel she says, "I know this is a disappointment." It's important to emphasize. This I'm not disappointed. I'm thrilled that you have found your mark. You know, that adolescent transition to adulthood, which again gets kind of weird when you think about it. <laughs> but still, um, yes, I do agree with what you said, Silver. True. But at the same time, to target audience, no? Yes? Honestly, I, I still think even for the target audience. Mm, because I, I'm thinking in my head, the way you write it down, like, Saying it's okay does hold water for, well, how you write it. I don't know. I'm just spitballing ideas here. I do feel that this is okay, yet your version is much better. Oh, see, now you're saying it's okay. It's spreading. Oh, no. uh... But don't worry, Norman. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's so infectious. But anyway, let's let's go on before we get all infected. It's okay. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's it's, it's really okay that the uh, Ponyville mail, mail service will deliver to a clubhouse. Yeah, as long as you gave the address. It's all okay, man. Oh, no. It's spreading. It's a, you're stuck in a loop. <laughs> so, anywho, um, the Crusaders get the letter and they read it out. Um, I'm just going to summarize this. Um, Gilead Lily invited the CMCs to a fundraiser that she and her uncle are holding in the Cantaloupe Observatory and she started volunteering there recently 
And oh, another fun fact that she is going to come down to Ponyville to help out with the camp during the lunar eclipse. So yay, much funs. And Scootaloo is off to do her extreme sports key mark day camp unsupervised without medical attention on hand. This will end well. But she's not doing it alone, Silver, because Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle are going to join her. So it's all okay. Well, there you go. Now now we can have several parties at the lawsuit. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be okay. <laughs> oh, Norman, you're in trouble. We're going to have to round you up with all the other people. It'll be an okay corral. <laughs> oh, no. And with that, episode ends. So... What can you say? Um, final thoughts, I guess. So, still, what do you think, man? Well, we didn't really talk about uh, Gilded Lily's design. Ah, yes, you wanted to talk about that one. So, before we kind of go to final thoughts, what do you think of Gilded Lily's design? There's a well, the Gilded really shows through is that so much of her uh, design, mane and coat, are almost the same tone of gold, oh. and it's very rare because well. Some of the foals you see in these pieces are based off the show. Some, I think, are uh, more the artist's o- own uh, creations. And let's see, it's Agnes Garboska, but I guess Heather Breckel would claim credit for coloring. Probably, unless she's directed to color sit pony in such a way. Exactly. But I find that usually ponies are the most visually attractive when they have con- contrasting uh, tones to their coats and manes. Rainbow Dash has a lot of warm colors contrasted against her blue coat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Applejack's a little closer in that orange and yellow are very close together, but they're still very distinct. Rarity stands out because everything stands out against a almost white coat. True. Gilded Lily is, is goldish on top of goldish, but her standout feature is her eyes, which are very uh, bright violet. True, and I'm just going to put it out there, Sunset Shimmer. She's um, looking similar to Gilded Lily in some shape or form. I don't know. The the red really stands out. I mean, it's bacon! <laughs> uh, making bacon pancakes. Oh, dear. You don't, you don't want to fry up Sunset Shimmer. You, you. Are you going to say that's okay now? Oh, cannibal! <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, where were we? Well, basically, just that I find... Her design is not bad by any means, and I enjoy that after she gets her key mark, she's a bit more free and lets her mane down, and it stays that way. But it's also just a curious design, and I, I kind of wonder, what was the process behind this character? Hmm, I'm not sure, because the, from the look here, I find her similar to Sunset in the way that her mane looks, because Sunset has the yellow and red tone to her mane or her hair and here it looks similar to that and i'm not 100 percent sure if they say copy sunset shimmer but it does look similar and well it all comes down to personal preference i guess i i really enjoy sunset's design but i find the red far more striking uh thanks to the yellow highlights uh gilded lily not so great a contrast between her coat and mane and so it all tends to blend together yeah and you know what? She looks like Cheetos. Chester Cheeto. Oh, there you go. That that means if you give her a pat on the uh, shoulder, you come away with all this gridu on your <laughs> hands. It's like, oh. oh, but it smells delicious. <laughs> oh, no. But, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, her design is pretty okay. I, I don't mind it at all. Like, I mentioned before, I like Sunset Shimmer a lot. And this reminds me of Sunset Shimmer. But uh, talking about designs, right? Remember the uh, Philly who wants to cook for the crew camp campers? Yeah, she looks like Pinkie Pie. Looks like Pinkie Pie. Let me double check here because I I was about to say Berry Punch. That too. Yeah, the color tones. I've seen a few ponies with similar poofy mates. Yeah, but it, in this scenario here, suddenly popping out of nowhere, but not really, uh, saying that she wants to cook for the group. It looks like a Pinkie Pie to me. Until we go to the next panel and she doesn't look anything like Pinkie Pie because of her red eyes. Red eyes. So it must, wait, that must mean she's evil. Aww. Wait, Rainbow Dash has red eyes. Uh. Evil! <laughs> oh, but still, um, other than that, so you got anything more to say? Nope, it's a fun, enjoyable comic. I guess I'm in my final thoughts right. now. 
it does raise the question of how easy is it to get a cutie mark now that the Crusaders have it? Mm -hmm. And does that cheapen the journey? Mm, I don't think so. I, I think the journey is still the same. It's just the way that you go through it. Because back in the days, there's nobody out there to help you. Now there's people helping you. But it doesn't mean that going to camp will guarantee you a cutie mark. Because... If the CMC doesn't really do anything that you're interested in, that means you're not going to get your cutie mark. You'll just have a lot of fun at camp, but other than that, no cutie mark. Either way, it's fun. It's a good follow-up to uh, the Crusaders and their struggles to maintain the cutie markness. What was it? Cutie mark day camp? Yeah, I think... Marks and recreation, yeah. yes. So, good times. Mm -hmm. And as for me, I love this episode of this comic. Like I mentioned before, I felt... Uh, warm fuzzy feelings when I read this one and the panel that got me was when Fancy Pants here said that it's okay and he still well in a in my rendition of or my interpretation of this one is he's proud of her um, even though she didn't get any regal cutie mark like as long as she got a cutie mark he's happy for her and gives a hug. And yeah, that, that is just awesome. That is just awesome. And other than that, I, I don't know what to say. I just enjoyed this comic. It was it was a lot of fun to read. Uh, and with that, review ends. So, Silver, what are you going to do next week? Well, we're going to have a little retrospective. We're going to talk about Season 7 as the whole. Yep, yep. That's been a while. And with this issue... Sorry. With this comic ending... I think it's time to start off new. Like you mentioned before, uh, next week we're going to do a Season 7 retrospective. And this issue here marks the end of Season 7. So, yay! Uh, next week we're going to do retrospective. And after that, who knows? Probably comic, probably special. We got no plans yet. Yay! We're improvising. I know. We should probably not do that. But hey, the MBS show, we're not scripted. So... Yeah. <laughs> that's why I can make Norman giggle unexpectedly with <laughs> you. And he'll say that's okay. Uh, that's okay, man. Oh, uh, wow. Well, <clears throat> oh, my bad. Oh, my well, But anywho, uh, give me a second to open the script. <laughs> uh, we should do this live. That way, it'll be much, much more insane. Oh, it's got, then, then we can include all the screw ups. Oh, yeah. That, that. Oh, the screw ups. Yep. <laughs> uh, but anyway, if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Starstream, Master of Like, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really, really awesome. And Silver, any. Thank yous and shout outs you want to give out? Oh, well, a thank you as always to the folks who support me on uh, YouTube and DeviantArt. You know, check out my works there. And when you hear this, I will be at Everfree Northwest. So I hope people are having a fun time at the convention. I hope that uh, everyone's doing well. And I will see, see you all online. True, 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 true. If you do go see Silver, do say hi. Say what a great job he's done and whatnot. And tell him... Hey, you heard him on the MBS show, not his, not his channel. <laughs> oh, oh, I see how it is. We're having a little competition now. <laughs> not really. Oh, but anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Verquil. And we'll guys see you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Okay. Ah, I wish I had hair as luscious as Gilded Lily. Oh, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs>